the war in Libya refuses to end and it has divided the Muslim world ideologically. Egypt has recently come up with an initiative which calls for negotiations in Geneva and the exit of all foreign mercenaries from Libya. This Egyptian initiative has the support of Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Russia, Jordan and Bahrain. This move is aimed directly at Turkey which stands on the other side of this Islamic bloc in the battlefields of Libya. The Libyan war continues to divide the Muslim world with different factions emerging and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one another. The internationally recognized government of National Accord GNA, is holding the fort in the capital city of Tripoli and making significant gains against the rival Libyan National Army or the LNA led by General Khalifa Haftar. The Haftar-led GNA has a strong presence in the West and holds most of the territory. But LNA has a strong hold in the East as it holds the capital region and many strategic assets. While Haftar is being viewed by the world as a better leader, the GNA offers a highly Islamist regime and this is where the Muslim world stands divided. Despite a UN arms embargo on Libya, Turkey, by sending reinforcements and largely Syrian mercenaries, has enabled the GNA to push back the forces of General Khalifa Haftar. While Turkey and Qatar are rooting for the GNA, Haftar's LNA has the backing of the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Russia and Egypt. And even though he has lost considerable ground in the last few months, the coalition is pushing him to continue with the conquest. Tensions over the gas fields in the region have simmered for years but escalated when Turkey signed a deal with Fayez al-Siraj's GNA to set up shared maritime borders last November. If Turkey gains control of Libya's waters, it will essentially be able to dominate the southern Mediterranean Sea to the detriment of European nations including Turkey's disillusioned neighbours, Greece and Cyprus. So in opposition to the deal, a declaration was signed in May by a combined bloc of Cyprus, Egypt, France, Greece and the UAE denouncing Turkey's illegal drilling efforts around Cyprus, its military intervention in Libya and its maritime borders deal with the GNA. While the UAE goes on an offensive against Turkey, the West has been seemingly unwilling to step into the mess at least this time. Although the official line of the European Union coincides with that of the UN, but the Mediterranean countries like Italy and France have their own vested interests here. The Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte had met Haftar in January this year. Rome sees Haftar as crucial in stemming the flow of African and Arabic refugees and migrants to Italy. Reports have also claimed that France has sent covert military help to LNA. France is wary of terrorism and has some other interests like oil fields and therefore its stance has put it at odds with that of the EU's position. Ties between Turkey and the UAE have been strained in recent years, particularly over Ankara's support for Qatar after four Arab countries, including the UAE, imposed sanctions on Doha in 2017 over its independent foreign policy. The Islamic bloc has a reason to dread the Muslim Brotherhood if it gains power in the unstable region. When popular protests flared across the region in 2011, the UAE and Saudi managed to call them. But Egypt served as an example of the threat that the Muslim Brotherhood could pose to their mode of absolute rule. After President Mubarak was overthrown in 2011, a government dominated by the Muslim Brotherhood took shape, which threatened the powerful position of the military. It took a lot of planning and effort to take down that regime. The fear of resurgent Islamist terror that originates from the Muslim Brotherhood is a global threat that the world should be wary of and therefore it is rather a necessity that Turkey's advances be kept in check. At this point, Turkey has all but won this war, but that can be reversed in time. You see, the continuous war in Libya has put a lot of strain on Turkey's finances, which has massive international debts. The onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic has further worsened its economy. Thereby, the UAE, having a sovereign wealth fund of more than $800 billion, is willing to play the waiting game. The UAE shall wait for Turkey to submit itself without pinning it down. If General Khalifa Haftar has been able to stay put for so long, it is all because of the massive funding from the UAE. Now we come to the ideological aspect of this war. The whole Libyan war has expanded beyond the realm of this military battle. 
UAE, Turkey and Qatar see this regime change war as an ideological one. Turkey's president and Qatar both are ideologically related to the political Islamist movement of the Muslim Brotherhood. Meanwhile, the Islamic bloc of UAE, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, all Arab nations, fear the Brotherhood's social revolutionary orientation and its inclination towards Islamic terrorism. Also, while Turkey wants to reinvigorate the memory of the Ottoman Empire, which in its time led most of the Muslim world, the now wealthy and influential petrol-driven Arab nations, at least most of them besides Qatar, are not so much on board. This war has in fact turned into a good Muslim versus bad Muslim fight, as recently Turkey started a Twitter campaign with the hashtag Boycott UAE, interestingly aided by Pakistani social media users. Here, the UAE was being accused of siding with the Hindus of India and the Jews of Israel, despite being a Muslim nation. Well, it is clear that wherever this war is heading, it will continue to deepen differences in the Muslim world.